Uh, we started in San Francisco, and 1929 was the infamous year of the Great Depression. Uh, so not many companies were starting then. It was a really unique time to start a business. Um, essentially, it was Lou Stoner and Robert Winther that started Winston. Now, if you look at the name R.L. Winston, that it's not the name of one person, it's the name of those two men. So you take the R from Robert, the L from Lou, the Win from Winther, and the Stun from Stoner, and that's where you get R.L. Winston. That's kind of where our roots are. Like we mentioned, it's really, we're really rooted in craftsmanship here, you know. Uh, that's where Lou Stoner started. He, he crafted his own tools, you know, to build bamboo fly rods. Welcome to the RNA Outdoors podcast, fueled by Ripcord Arrow Rest and First Light Hunting Apparel. At RNA, we are public land DIY conservationists that love to share our passion for the outdoors. So join us and our team as we interview professionals in the industry to share insight knowledge that helps make hunters and anglers more successful. listeners, subscribers, and fellow outdoorsmen and women. This is your host, Lucas Paw, and I'm excited to tell you about some of the sponsors that continue to help make this podcast not only happen, but grow and thrive in this digital world of audio content. This podcast is brought to you by Ripcord Arrow Rest, the bow hunter's number one fallaway rest on the market. Ripcord is known for 100% full-time arrow containment and their patented drop dead brake system that eliminates launcher bounce back. Best of all, Ripcord is backed by their rock solid guarantee. If the original owner has a part break for any reason, it will be repaired or replaced at no charge. And did I mention, Ripcord is located in Southwest Montana where all their products are made with pride in America. Check them out at ripcordrs.com and on their social media feeds. This podcast is brought to you by First Light Clothing and Hunting Apparel. Born in the Rockies in central Idaho, First Light's mission is to create simple yet proven versatile gear that provides comfort and performance in any situation while working to promote the pursuit of ethical hunting and stewardship. I recently joined the First Light Pro Staff team and have continued to be impressed year after year in their innovations in engineering and merino wool fabrics. Ten years ago, they started putting out wool fabrics with camo patterns, and immediately this changed the game. Since then, they offer multiple layering systems and kits in various proprietary patterns and continue to raise the bar with their competition. Find them online at firstlight.com or under their social media feeds. Go farther, stay longer. Okay, welcome folks to the RNA Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Lucas Paw, and today we are sitting here in Twin Bridges, Montana, which is nestled on the uh, Beaverhead River in uh, southwest Montana, but uh, more importantly, also home to a company, R.L. Winston Rod Company, uh, which we were fortunate to uh, come down and do a little tour this morning and uh, understand the process and, and really, you know, how a, a small town like Twin Bridges, which what a population of 400, I think, is yep, what the sign said. 400, right? 400 people, uh, but a neat <laughs> little a, good day. <laughs> a neat little complex that uh, employs you know a lot of local residents uh, and makes a very quality product. So today I'm joined by a couple of my sidekicks here, Mr. Ben Miller out of Dillon, Montana. Welcome back, Ben. Thank you. Good to be here. It's a great tour. Tyler Houston as well, another now Dale native. Yeah, from Polaris, Polaris Montana. Native. So, uh, yeah, finally moved back from Middle East again, and here I am. 
ready to stay. Welcome back, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And, and uh, also, you know, more importantly, we were able to go through, like I said, a tour here at R.L. Winston. And uh, Adam Hutchinson, who is the marketing for pro services here at R.L. Winston, uh, was able to uh, take us through that tour, which was really neat. It was really interesting to see how the product is designed from basically from start to finish, from development till the finished product. So anyway, I'd like to welcome Adam Hutchinson to the r Outdoors podcast. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on board. And it's uh, really cool to have you guys in and take you through the shop and show you how, show you how we do business and make our rots. Yeah. So. What I thought was interesting, just to kind of kick it off, is, you know, when you drive up to this facility, um, it looks like a fly shop for the, from the front, right? And then when you come in and, and, and you go through the history, the museum, but one thing I thought was interesting that you talked about was is when you go on to the shop floor, if you will, it's a production floor. It's it's people working. It's not a factory. And maybe you could explain maybe some of the history and, and how R.L. Winston, you know, is what it is today. Sure, absolutely. So um, we started in 1929 uh, in San Francisco, California, actually. So we didn't start in Montana, for those who didn't know that. Uh, we started in San Francisco, and 1929 was the infamous year of the Great Depression. Uh, so not many companies were starting then. It was a really unique time to start a business. Our founder, Lou Stoner, he was primarily a machinist. So he um, was able to develop his machines, produce his machines to, to build what he wanted to build. Uh, so that was one of the reasons they were able to maintain business in, in the Great Depression. Um, essentially, it was Lou Stoner and Robert Winther that started Winston. Now, if you look at the name R.L. Winston, that it's not the name of one person. It's the name of those two men. So you take the R from Robert, the L from Lou, the Win from Winther, and the Stun mm-hmm. from Stoner, and that's where you get R.L. Winston. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where our roots are. Um, and, you know... Uh, like we mentioned, it's really, we're really rooted in craftsmanship here. You know, uh, that's where Lou Stoner started. He, he crafted his own tools, you know, to build bamboo fly rods. So that's what we do here. We hand build, you know, fly rods from all graphite rods to graph, high modulus graphite rods using boron technology and even bamboo rods still today. So it's neat. Yeah. Going through the tour today, I thought it was just pretty interesting when you talk about craftsmanship it was nothing but just hands-on craftsmanship i mean there's a lot of tools of the trade and in different uh, obviously materials that are used but it's people behind those you know stepping on the pneumatic pedal to make the you know the the system work and um, maybe just explain a little bit about kind of the um, you know the background in terms of you know what makes rl winston um, you know what it is today yeah, absolutely. So um, craftsmanship, what we've already talked about, but also using the best materials available to us, you know, to build very high performance fly rods. We're not limited to to low cost materials. I mean, we, we have av- available very high end military grade uh, NASA approved materials uh, to use at our disposal. And uh, it's important for us to build the best possible product that we can we can build rather than just limiting ourselves in that regard. So uh, for us, that's important. Um, And it's kind of a unique marriage, you know, craftsmanship and high-end materials. Usually when you think of military-grade materials, you're thinking of laser cutters or, um, you know, machines, you know, precision cutting things or building Mm -hmm. things. You know, for us, it's utilizing these materials but still utilizing them in a way where we can hand build them, which looks back on our tradition and where we've come from, you know, and that's, that's always been important to us to. Yeah. It really really was an amazing tour. I'd have to say, you know, I've never been into a hand custom fly shop, you know, or a fly rod maker like you guys did. And just the amount of hands that touch each one of those rods was really amazing to me. I mean, it was incredible to see. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, you giving us the tour and, you know, anybody that's in this Twin Bridges area really needs to come down and check out this. This is really a, I guarantee you when you walk out, if you're going to buy a rod when you're walking out, you're going to go find a dealer within a, <laughs> within a few days and you're going to be out on the river. You know, really was incredible to see. That's you know, right. Yeah. You know, it really changes people's perspective. Uh, you know, they just, all, a lot of consumers, they'll just see the end product, you know. And once you actually, you know, 
once you go through the tour and you actually see the person that builds the rod or ferrules the rod, I mean, we only have two ferrulers. So if you have a Winston rod in the past 20, 20 years, you know, it's one of these two guys probably ferruled it, you know. So, I mean, you can go back to exactly who built this rod. I mean, we only have one shift of production employees in the back, you know. So, I mean, we can, I mean, Barb, Barb's been hand inscribing our rods for the last 16 years i mean yeah, yeah that's probably amazing. almost amazing like uh she's done every single rod in the last 16 years pretty much coming out here pretty it's much incredible. pretty yeah. much we've had probably yeah. about six inscribers but yeah. barb has been i mean like i said she raised a long the standing yeah, yeah that's cool so so 1929 and rl winston is formed and you've got these these four guys that come together and build this company so maybe take us through uh the history from you know 1995 you see you know you talked about the the building being built and then maybe how that's just transitioned into what it is today. sure yeah i mean it started with lou stoner and robert winther and winther wasn't with the company for very long he sold his his shares to um Lascott and he Lascott wasn't with the company very long uh, but when uh, Doug Merrick came on, he actually walked into the showroom in uh, San Francisco looking just to buy a rod. He's a, an accomplished caster. Well, he left the showroom with a job. And then later he would purchase Lascott's shares. So Lou Stoner and Doug Merrick would own the company together for a long time until 1957, I believe, when Lou Stoner unexpected, unexpectedly died. Um, and at that time, they were producing rods for everything i mean they made deep sea fishing rods bait casters spin casters fly rods um really the thing that propelled winston into worldwide notoriety is the uh, competition casting rods um and they're really 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 unique and lou stoner actually patented the hollow fluted bamboo design where he actually hollowed out the inside of a of a bamboo fly rod to make it lighter but it actually made it stronger and more responsive so if you look at these tournament these old bamboo tournament casters are really long so doing that was critical in making the rod light enough to where the caster could actually work it and, and cast a long ways so they they actually achieved several world records and that's really what put winston on the map and um after stoner died uh Really, Merrick kind of, he was really the first to steer the company in the fly fishing specific direction. And Merrick was the first to bring about, about a new material fiberglass. So, I mean, looking back, there's always this forward looking, um, this forward facing thing for us. You know, it's never been just, uh, let's just do the same old thing. You know, it's like, what's the next thing we can do? And that's where Merrick went. He's like, let's, let's look into fiberglass. It's a higher modulus material, faster, you know, you're able to carry more line and then, and then it just transfers from there. So after Stoner died, uh, Merrick owned the company up until 1973. And this is really where the Montana connection comes in. Uh, 1973 is when Tom Morgan, uh, a boy from Ennis, Montana, purchased the company and uh, he stayed on in San Francisco for a few years, learned the rod building trades um, and then later brought on Glenn Brackett as a partner and together the two men moved the company back to Montana and uh, the reason they did that is because there's awesome fishing here. <laughs> yeah. Right no San Francisco is a little different. Yeah. Tom, Tom wanted to build rods and take them to the beaverhead and test them on the beaverhead See how they fish, see how they played fish, and then bring them back and continue tweaking them. So that's why we're here now, and that's why we remain here. I mean, we're five minutes away from four blue ribbon trout streams from our front door. So yeah, it, Twin is in an incredible place. If you're looking at a demographic area of fishing, if you want to head to the Beaverhead, if you want to head to the Madison, or if you want to head to the Big Hole, I mean, you're within what probably an hour to an hour and a half of any of those. Oh, you know, totally. If that right. And, and, and the critical thing about down here is there's just no population. I mean, there's just nobody around here. I mean, what's what's this whole area within a 120 mile radius? I mean, Beaverhead County, forty thousand people, maybe. Not many. I mean, it's Madison. Not, it's this not Madison, not, yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There's nobody here. And I think no, for great. a long time, Winston was the biggest employer in madison county um i think there's a 
couple ski resorts now that outnumber us, but for a long time, Winston was one wow. of the bigger little employers. ski resort, uh, Big Sky? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only the biggest one in the world. Yeah, let's yeah. yeah. uh, yeah, down so, there. Yeah. So speaking of kind of the company, I mean, how, how many employees do you guys employ now? I guess, you know, kind of fast forward to where you're at now and, and uh, you know, where it's, I guess, again, where it's kind of the journey is, is gone. Yeah, so kind of going back to the owners, it's really important to note uh, David and Dachi. He's our current owner. He purchased the company from Tom and Glenn in 1991. And really, um, really, David was the person who said, you know, in order for us to grow, because we weren't building our own blanks, you know, that's when G. Loomis was actually building the blanks for us at the time. So David had the foresight to say, to say hey, if we're, we're going to grow, we need to build our own fly rod manufacturing facility. And that's that's when we built our big facility here on the south end of town. And um, from there, I mean, it just kind of snowballed. I mean, from there, we had the award-winning IM6 and LT5. The LT5 piece was really the first multi-ferrule rod to actually feel like a three-piece rod. It was actually smooth. It was light. It wasn't clunky. It was a medium-action rod still. It wasn't a fast-action rod, which... Which, which you usually get with multi, multiple ferro rods, you know. But um, so we designed that. And then we got into the boron technology in 1990, into 97, I believe. And that was when we introduced the BL5 series, which was, I call it the Frankenstein rod. Had a very stiff butt section, had three groovy midsections. And the first run of them actually had a fiberglass tip section. So... Wow very opposite ends of the uh-huh. spectrum, right? So that was a five-piece then? That was a five-piece rod. Five-piece rod. Yep. So. Wow. And then predominantly, I guess maybe talking about fly rods, maybe you could walk us through and the listeners through the process of kind of from the start, um, you've got the material and then kind of how it goes through the process until production and then it's completed. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we work with four different types of graphite uh, for now. Um, all ranging with different modulus. And uh, to put it simply, uh, we work with low modulus to high modulus. And uh, a high modulus rod will recover faster to um, to its natural position than a lower modulus. So slower, slower rods have lower modulus graphite. Faster rods have higher modulus graphite, essentially. So we work with different modulus. In a lot of case, cases, a lot of our rods u- utilize different modulus. So we might use a lower modulus graphite in the tip, uh, more of a medium modulus in the middle sections, and then very high modulus in the butt section accompanied in our boron rods with boron technology to stiffen up that butt section and give it a lot of power, especially when you need it. So we work with our, our raw materials. We'll cut them by hand. Uh, to very specific tapers um, by, with, with patterns and stuff. Uh, after we cut them by hand, we'll cut them by hand with the straight edge down to a 32nd of an inch accuracy in order for that part to move throughout the entire production process. Uh, it needs to be within those parameters. After that, we will take that material down. We'll roll it on a mandrel with the rolling machine. Uh, then it transfers to the tape wrap machine. And then it bakes in the oven. Now it's, like we mentioned earlier, these guys are craftsmen. They're doing this all by hand. Obviously, they use a rolling table and a tape wrap, tape wrap machine to do all this work. But there's constant quality control here. After they, Before they do the job, they inspect the part. After they do the job, they inspect the part. If it's not good, that part gets eliminated from the production process. If it's good, it gets passed along. It's really cut and dry for us. It's either good or it's not. So. And that's that three thirty second tolerance you were saying. Yeah, that's well, it's got to stay within that. Yeah, one thirty second of or an 30 inch. One thirty second. Okay. Yep. Oh. One thirty second of an inch uh, affects a rod's action. Uh, mm-hmm. In some cases, dramatically. It oh. uh, it adds stiffness, and it it'll either adds add stiffness or take away stiffness. So, one thirty second of an inch is extremely important to us. So back to that, just quick question, because, uh, you know, some guys don't understand, like, the difference in uh, modulus when they're casting. Is that distance? I mean, can you kind of explain, like, okay, if you want a, a high elasticity, do you want, like, uh, is that for, you know, casting in salt water? Is that casting for rivers, shorter distances? Can you kind of explain that? That would be great. For sure, absolutely. So we make a lot of different rods for different applications. So we make a boron 3LS, which is 
designed primarily for presentation style fishing and dry fly fishing, small creek fishing, you know. So you're going to have uh, so a lot shorter casting distance. A lot shorter casting stuff, distance, yeah. but uh, accuracy is still a premium. Um, really, it's important that a rod uh, protects tippet, so it's not going to be overly stiff. So you, you, you'll use lower modulus graphite in that. We still use boron technology in a very light form in the butt section, so you still maintain uh, a lot less tip wobble. So you have a little bit more control in the wind, you know, when you're using these rods. Uh, but at the same time, they're designed for shorter casting distances, you know, for presentation style fishing. So, and then saltwater, saltwater rods are kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So you're going to have uh, stiffer, stiffer tapers, essentially, stiffer patterns, a little bit more material. Um, and that material is going to recover faster because... If you're bone fishing, you need a rod. You might only need have one chance, and you need the rod to load extremely fast. One false cast, and you're there, right? Mm -hmm. So you need something really stiff, really powerful, um, but it's still going to have that Winston feel because our our design um, ideas are progressive. So from a softer material down into a more powerful material in the butt, so still going to feel like a Winston but you're going to have the power there for saltwater fishing. So okay. a big game. So. so one of the things we were, I was noticing when we were going through the tour, so there was the part where the, the gentleman pops the mandrel out, and then you've basically, you've got the blank there, mm -hmm. and then you start assembling, you know, the rod, and then maybe just kind of talk to some of the different disciplines of what some of the folks do. We saw the one gentleman who was, you know, looking for, um, you know, kind of where that sweet spot is on mm -hmm. the rod, and then you've got, you know, people that are tying the, tying the, um, um, guides and everything onto the rod. Maybe just kind of talk a little bit about how that process works. Sure. So, I mean, it, it, it's it's like a three-week process, essentially, to, to build a rod from start to finish. And, I mean, everything needs to be done correctly and right on, right on our design parameters in order for it to, to move on. Um, so going back to the tape wrap machine, we put a cellophane tape after the part's rolled, and that holds it onto the mandrel. And the person putting on that tape wrap has to put it with the correct tension so it's not digging into the rod scrim and putting weak, weak points in there. Uh, so there's got to be a lot of tension paid there. And after that, it goes in the oven where we cure that graphite in the resin. And that's where it hardens into, into, into a rod, essentially. That's when it really becomes a rod that, that you can use and actually start building into a, a final product. Mm -hmm. um, so every, you know, different materials require different curing, curing times. So we'll cure the rod in the oven, uh, depending on what we're building. We'll cure it for a set amount of time. And then it'll come out. Uh, we're, we'll remove the mandrel, which is the physical mold in which the graphite pattern's rolled onto. And it's a, actually a really unique machine. You know, I say if, if you saw that machine, wa you were walking down the street, you saw that machine, you'd be like, well, that builds wrenches. I don't know. You know? <laughs> but it's a very specific machine that removes mandrels from uh, fin or cured graphite parts. So um, the reverse a, log splitter. Is that what reverse you log splitter. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Rob calls it. Yeah. So it just removes a part from the mandrel because a person can't take that part off. Just because it's wrapped so tightly on there, that resin cures, a person just can't physically remove it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just cured on there tight, and you want a consistent taper, you know, when you're when you're with high-end fishing rods. So, so you pops that off. Then Rob will take it in and sand off those ridges left from the tape wrap to make it a nice, smooth part. And uh, that's important for a couple reasons. Uh, gets it to the correct OD, you know. So it's got to be right on the money when he takes that. It's a wet sanding process. So he'll sand it down to the correct OD and he'll inspect that part for any flaws or blems in there that we weren't able to see with that, with the tape wrap bridges. So that's a huge quality control standpoint for us. Uh, we're able to see anything that's pushed in with the, with the tape wrap or anything like that. And uh, we'll sand them down to an exact OD. Then it goes into our, our paint room where we'll dip that part up to three different times. Uh, two, two parts of green, green paint, one part of clear coat. Um, and it's a perfect finish. I mean, if there's any kind of flaws in the paint, uh, we will wash that paint off and redip it until it looks perfect every time. And every coat is cured in the oven. After it's cured in the oven, it goes in for the second coat of paint. After that paint's approved and cured, then it'll get a clear coat on. And then that blank's finally done. So from there, the rod will get ferruled, 
Um, cut, everything's custom ferrule to an exact ferrule depth. I mean, we don't we don't grind our ferrules or anything. It's if you have a ferrule depth of a butt section in the mid three that's two inches, it's going to be exactly two inches every single time. You know, for for that design, it's not going to be an inch and, or two and an eighth, two and a quarter, just under two. It's going to be two inches on the money. So it's it's a custom ferrule process, and that's why you send in your whole rod if you ever break a Winston rod. So we can custom ferrule the new the new section to the rest of the rod. So um, after that, it gets the builder will spline it properly. He will glue on the tip tops. He'll glue on the grips, and uh, then it goes over to our wrappers. Every single rod is hand wrapped, one guide thread at a time. No no machines or anything. Um, and we have about 15 at-home wrappers, which is kind of unique for our company. We employ a pretty good portion of Madison and Beaverhead County with uh, these, these custom wrappers that will come in on a weekly basis, pick up an order of rods, take them home, wrap them at home, and bring them back where they're all, they're all, they all go through a quality control process, make sure everything's wrapped on correctly. And that was a neat point you said, you know, you're talking like stay-at-home moms that are coming in doing this and just lots of people that are looking for a little extra money or to totally to their time. It's really neat. And it's yeah. amazing. I mean, and that much more of a custom, customized uh, rod, you know. They have you know? a, I mean, there's such a pride with those folks too. I mean, if you need a rod sooner, they'll, like, they get right on it and they do, I mean, we have people wrapping rods for 20 plus rod, 20 plus years here. So our head rod wrapper's been doing it longer than I've been alive, essentially. <laughs> so uh, well, it's it's pretty amazing, and I you know I think Elaine could probably wrap a rod in her sleep. You know, yeah. uh, one one rod wrapper could wrap a, a whole Winston rod. One of our wrappers can wrap a rod in about an hour. Uh, custom wow. custom builders are just like, well, how do you do that? You know, it takes me like a week to wrap a rod, and yeah. I mean. They're just trained, and I mean, it's it's an easy thing to learn. It's a hard thing to master. Sure, you it's know? very specialized. So mm-hmm. it's not like they're in there doing the coding and doing the inscribing. Their job is to just you know wrap the guides on the rod. Yeah, make Even sure with, it's done flawlessly. Exactly. Even with that said, like all of our blank roll, rolling personnel are cross trained because we're a small company. You know, so um, we need we need everybody to know how to roll a rod, how to dip a rod, how to sand a rod. Because if they don't know, they don't know what the next guy needs to do to do yeah. his job correct. So That's it's important. It's yeah. really important as far as our quality. So everyone can do just everyone in in blank rolling can do every single one of those jobs exactly as it needs to be done. So yeah, one of the things that to me stands out whenever you see Winston, it's always green, right? It's mm-hmm. the, they call it the Winston green. Maybe you can talk a little bit about just the color and what's synonymous with that for the company. Sure. So they they started. I believe, so Tom Morgan was the first person in our company to look into graphite, I believe. He was really the guy to say, this new material is really where we're going, right? So this is, it's a slightly faster material, but with the proper tapers, you can still make it feel really nice, like fiberglass. So he was really the first to look into that material. And when he was first getting those blanks, it came green. And he's like, you know, it's a great color. Looks great. So ever since that, we've, we're like, you know what, we're, we're green sticks. You know, yeah. we've always, we've, all of our premium rods, rods have always been green. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really our flagship. That's who we are. You know, that's one of the ways people identify with our brands is, is the color green. Yeah. And any premium rod you see coming from, from Winston will be green. And we do use that color to differentiate uh, premium rods from kind of middle of the road rods. So uh, but any premium Winston, it'll be a green rod. Yeah, so. which is pretty neat. That's again, that's what I always think of when I mm-hmm. think of Oral Winston is that that kind of darker green color that it's like said synonymous with the, with the brand. Yeah, it's a unique color too. I mean, it's a specialized color developed exactly for us. Uh, the company that produces for it for us actually calls it Winston Green because it takes very a very specific mixture of colors to get to and it's translucent so when you hold a winston rod in in the sunlight you can still see all the beauty marks of the tape rack wraps that were sanded off the graphite through there so it's a really beautiful translucent color it doesn't hide the beauty marks of the of the graphite it actually magnifies it so if any of you guys have a winston rod out there i mean 
hold it in the sunlight and enjoy it for a second. And yeah. Check it out. I mean, yeah. it, I mean, even if the guys are listening, they're just hunting, don't fish. Just go buy one, hang it on the wall. They're beautiful. I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, really they're meant to be they're fish. Though. Gorgeous. They're just yeah. meant to be fish. They're specialized fishing material. Yeah. And the guys are fish. Go buy one anyway. Yeah. So. You, should, you should see my rods. They're just, I mean, I have, I have some special rods that I tube up, and they're kept away. But I do have, like, two, two rods that are always ready to roll. Never unfarreled. <laughs> They're rough looking. The nickel silver is scratched. You know, the blanks are yep. scratched and dull. Old but, reliables. But yeah. man, they are just always. I mean, I've had my nine foot six weight B three X for seven years now, and the only time I ever broke it was in a door, and it's only been unfarreled like four times for transport, wow. essentially. Yeah. So it's That's awesome. awesome. That's cool. Are you getting out to fish quite a bit? You know, around here and yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So one of my Not favorite, one of my favorite hatches is actually the crane flies. Um, in August and a lot of people don't know about crane flies but it's a really unique way to fish so crane fly skitter and if you don't know what a crane fly is I call them I've always called them um, mosquito eaters as kids they look like okay, a yeah. big mosquito like a mosquito hawk or something yeah, yeah and you'll see them at night against against lights you know but that's a crane fly and um, you skitter those things down and across because they skitter across the water at night and you literally see, and you catch big fish on them because big fish are always keyed in on the crane flies in every stage from the pupil stage to the, to when they're an adult fly. And it's one of the most exciting ways to fish because in a lot of cases you'll see a fish travel 10 feet to eat that crane fly. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Cause they're chasing, they're chasing the wake. They're not, they're seeing that wake and automatically knowing it's a crane fly. And what time of year is that normally for August? Corona? August, September. August, so. September. So now, yeah. now, now's the yeah. time. Well, what we should be doing this on the river instead <laughs> of here in the it's, office. It's huh? pretty fun. I <laughs> float in the river right now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I almost need a gas mask right now with all the smoke. Oh, but yeah, 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 it's been pretty terrible. bad. Yeah. yeah, Adam. Maybe um, one of the things I thought was intriguing too was kind of the cork process mm-hmm. and the the grip process of the actual rods. Maybe just kind of walk us through the you know the process of the, how the cork works where you get it and kind of the final production of that sure it's all prefabricated for us by another supplier um but it's it's the highest quality cork you can possibly get your hands on um it's floor grade cork uh all hand selected for quality and beauty uh it's very expensive um in the past we had to hand turn our own cork um and one of the main reasons one of kind of the unique reasons was the, the wine industry controlled cork supply coming out of Portugal. So the wine industry took up all most of the high-quality cork coming out of there. So we hand-turned them all in-house. Um, once wine went synthetic and screw top, we, uh, we, had, we were able to kind of get our hands on some of that higher-grade cork, and it made more sense for us as far as overhead is concerned to actually have those produced exactly to our specs and the board out diameter of those grips is bored out and tapered out to exactly match a fly rod it was supposed to go on to so uh, a seven foot two weight ls has a very specific bore uh, for that butt section a very specific grip for that butt section it's a proprietary grip actually for us so, so you couldn't go to you know your local you know sporting goods store and buy a a cork that, or a grip that would fit not at all it's that. a unique it's a unique grip all the way through um yeah so we don't sell that to custom rod builders or dealers or anything like that it's a it's a custom grip for winston do you have to replace the cork much at all with, with guys that i mean it seems um, like they last forever whenever you buy a it's rod fun. you get some unique guys in there that you know it, cork's one of those materials where you have to use filler because it's a natural material it's a tree bark you know mm-hmm. so that filler material that that wood that wood filler is actually going to fall out eventually so that's where you see all those voids in that cork for me i think it's um unlucky to change your cork because the cork tell really to me the cork tells the story of the rod right it tells you how much you get used dirty chunks out of it dirty chunks you can see where guys stick their hooks in there you know maybe you got some fish slime on there from you know like a 24 inch brown that you caught you know so i i I don't clean it unless if there's like (laughs) cow shit or something that got on my (laughs) cork maybe i'll 
throw some water on it or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. But Clean it off. Yeah. Other than that, you know, it's to me, it's unlucky, but you do have guys that I know guys that will saran wrap it. So they'll use it. They'll wash their hands and they'll use their rod. And then when they're done with it, they'll saran wrap their grip, put it back in the sock and <laughs> the tube. And it's perfect. You know, yeah. fishermen I, are interesting guys. I've seen, I've too. seen rods from like 1985 that are like in perfect Pristine condition. Shape. I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> Oh yeah, I fish this every day. I'm like, Okay. And you ever liar? catch anything? <laughs> <laughs> liar? They yeah. need to be my father-in-law, which yeah. just happens to be Ben's dad at yeah. some point. <laughs> He'll run them through the ringer, won't he? Oh, oh boy. Man. <laughs> That's what they're meant to do. I mean, they're beautiful rods, yeah. but they're, they're, they're meant, meant to, to be fish. used, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of, you know, Tyler was talking about the cork being repaired. Maybe just talk a little bit about repair. So and not necessarily, you know, defect rates and how many you have mm-hmm. coming in. But, I mean, what's, what's a, a component of the rod that sometimes breaks down? And, and what's kind of the repair process, turnaround time, and so forth. Sure. I mean, it's it's tip repairs are most common by far. You know, I mean, it's really easy to slam a tip in a door, or, you know, fall and break a tip or whatever. So that's, that's our main repair. Every new Winston that's bought through an authorized dealer comes with a lifetime warranty. So uh, you break, you slip and fall and jam the tip, slam it in the door, uh, send it in to us. We'll fix it under warranty as long as you're the original owner of the rod. Uh, there is a $50 administrative fee, but that that just covers our shipping, handling, and administrative stuff uh, behind the scenes. The repair is completely done at no charge. So uh, we do we do quite a few repairs. I mean, tips tips break. I mean, that's just how it goes. Yeah. I mean, but uh, the nimblest part of the, the rod. So yep. So we do need the whole rod in when we're we're doing repairs. You know, the ferruling process is all custom. So in order to build the the next section, we actually need to customize it to the rest of the rod. So so you get that original rod you fell in love with. You know, yeah. so, so you don't so just go buy a tip or, from Cabela's yeah. and stick it in there. No, <laughs> no, we do, we don't send tips out because it's yeah. literally impossible. You you don't the rod won't feel right. So. But, uh, I and mean, then turnaround time, I mean, is it typical? I mean, a lot of companies, it varies based on the amount of time when you send the rod in. A lot of times, like, people like to send them in in the winter time because we're not doing a lot of fishing because it takes two, three months to get it back. That's right. Well, for us, during the busy season, the very most, it'll take four weeks. The very most. I mean, we're, we pride ourselves on inline product being from the time we get it in to the time we get it out, three weeks. I mean, that doesn't take into con- your shipping time or the return shipping time. But from the time we get it into our facility to the time we ship it out is is within three weeks, and we do it all on a first come first serve to to stay fair to people to make sure people get their rods on time. Sure. Um, but and that's impressive. I mean, seeing the amount of hand work that just goes into that again is just that's great. To yeah, we have one guy. Weeks, so. We have one or two guy, but pretty much one guy that ferrules all of our repair rods, and he he'll get your rod. He'll custom ferrule the new section ferrule it and it and it just moves through so um it's it's still a, it's still a customized part um even after the rod's broken so it's really important and a lot of people get confused that we actually repair the broken parts we literally like glue the broken parts no it's it's a brand new part that is custom ferrule to the rest of the rod and that's why we ask that, that we receive the rest of the rod and then we also inspect the rod you know, just in case that there's other little fractures or something going on with it to ensure that we cover all the bases. So mm-hmm. goes basically goes back through the same process it did when it was it does. probably built to some extent with it, the quality control to make sure what you're sending out is going to be, a, again, a quality product. Exactly. Yep. And we have uh, most of our old tapers we still have. So on not every not every rod we can still repair. But if it's covered under warranty, you're you're available for an upgrade, which is great, you know. But a lot of the rods built in the 80s, we can still repair because we still have the patterns. We still have the mandrels. You know, it might be a slightly higher graphite because that graphite is no longer available to us. But it's going to be built on the same pattern with the same taper. It might be a little bit faster. But, I mean, if you're not an expert caster, I don't think you're you're really going to notice notice that. that. Yeah, That's amazing. So. No Adam, maybe here. talk a little bit about the uh, inscribing process. I was I was pretty just blown away at the fact. I mean, and that's kind of me. The trademark of R.L. Winston is is when you get one, it's not a stamp, you know, trademark on. Yeah. It. I mean, you've got someone in there who's hand scribing all every one of the rods that goes through this facility. That's, that's right. pretty amazing. Yeah. So we have one. What right now we have one person. We're always looking for someone to 
help. You know, because <laughs> don't look at us. Don't Barb, worry. Barb is <laughs> yeah, penmanship he, is that, that's probably pretty important on the on the resume. <laughs> you guys yeah. would do all caps probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hashtags. Hashtags only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No hashtags on Winston's. You no. know. So, but uh, no one one person. Uh, she actually inscribes every single uh, production Winston rod and. She inscribed uh, the model, the length, the line weight, and the serial number. She also inscribed the serial number on every section because it's a customized rod. That way you know what, what section belongs to which rod. Um, and she's using a calligraphy pen and ink. So it's, it's really kind of a, uh, our final touch. It's really kind of an artist final touch, if you will. I mean, every digit has to look a specific way. So when we're training someone... Uh, they can have different handwriting, but, you know, a two, when she's inscribing the, the number two, it has to be a line. It can't have the loop, you know, when it dips back. It's got to be exactly like that. So we have specs on every number and every letter uh, to train inscribers. That's why it's so hard, but we, it's really important for us to stay consistent, have that consistent look. If you're going to, that's why it's so, it's just tough to do. You know, you have to have that consistent look. So people could say, yeah, that's a Winston, you know, but at the yeah. same time, it's really a unique final touch that takes a little extra time. You know, it's just not a, not a decal you glue into the blank, you know, it's really just a, a final touch and, and she's, yeah, she's amazing pretty talent. amazing. Yep. You told a good story that she did earlier in the, uh, with the guy that wanted to do his own signature. Yeah. Oh, so that was pretty funny. So she's actually signed people's signatures on rods before. And one guy, he, uh, he wanted to sign his rod and, and he was an employee at the time, and he came back to do it. And uh, he tried several times and was getting rather annoyed. And uh, Barb just rather calmly said, just write your name on this piece of paper, paper and I'll study it, and I'll do it. And uh, the guy told me, he's like, yeah, it took her one time, and she signed my name on it. <laughs> It's got to make you feel good when someone else can sign your name, especially if you're writing checks and other things. Yeah. 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 Identity cool. theft, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, maybe talk a little bit about um, some of the other products that you guys provide. So I noticed you have fly lines. You, mm -hmm. you guys have also got into kind of the real business as well. Maybe talk a little bit about uh, kind of how that meshes with, with the rods and the company. Sure, you bet. We'll start with Bauer Reels. Um, Bauer is a very well-known um, brand. Uh, it started in the early 90s and um, by John Bauer, who originated in Porsche racing. So a lot of his precision manufacturing came from that racing industry. So he was actually racing the, Por the Porsches. And um, uh, after he got out of that, he was a big fly fisherman. And uh, precision reels with drags and clutches and became a big thing. He was uh, really the first, one of the first people to uh, produce a large arbor reel which picked up a lot of line, yeah. super smooth. So he was really one of the first to do that. Um, and their quality control is second to none. I mean, their tolerances are down to one one thousandth of an inch. Wow. I mean, it's unbelievable tolerances there. So the two brands really align nicely. And um, Winston acquired Bauer in May of 2016. Um, Bauer is still being run as a separate company, really. I mean, it's under Winston ownership, but run as a separate company, uh, much the same as SA and Orvis, you know, Orvis acquired SA, but at, I mean, SA still kind of runs as their own thing. And that's how we're treating Bauer. You know, it's really important. And where's Bauer based out of? So the, the production and manufacturing is, is in Oregon. And the anodization is in California, and then the final assembly is here in Twin Bridges. So, so still made in the USA. It's made yeah. in the USA. Absolutely. Absolutely. around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're still working through um, uh, building up our inventory a little bit more, so we're a little bit backed up. But uh, 2018 is looking really good for Bauer. So um, coming out uh, in a big way with Bauer. And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, the two companies really align nicely with their – you know, with their image and their quality control and, and their product and, and our philosophy. So it's really been a good, it's really been a good prod project for us. And it's going to be a great, continue to be a great brand in the industry. So and when you talked about the larger Arbor, that obviously attracts the spay guys, probably the saltwater mm -hmm. guys that need that extra line and backing. So is that more where their focus is or is it still in the kind of the five, six weight? Trout uh, fishing. Or we we produce arena. rods for, or not rods, but reels for everything. So saltwater guys really like them. 
Spay guys really, really like them because um, you get a little bit more capacity. But really, it's a smoother line pickup is what it is. Um, we're Bauer produced cork drags, but now um, they're all uh, uh, carbon fiber drags. Um, zero maintenance. Uh, the big the big game reels, so the RX-5, RX-6, RX-7 are completely shut down reels. A person can't turn them when you have the drag fully engaged. Wow. It's pretty impressive um so i mean fish i mean you're thinking gts and tarpon with those and yeah stuff that spins out a lot of line that's typically right. that's right <laughs> we make space specific stuff so you get your classic hard hardback frames which are a little bit heavier to help balance out longer two-handed rods um and that's an rx classic uh, essentially um and they're just same drag system as an rx just with a, a solid back frame so and you can basically marry these these larger reels to rods that you guys manufacture and that's kind of how the the, how the businesses work together well that's right are you guys making those suggestions for people too so if somebody calls in and says hey i'm looking for this type of rod and then do you say you know what kind of reel i got then you oh absolutely i mean bowers one of the first on our list obviously but uh we don't shy away from other brands either you know we as as a winston we understand people prefer other brands so we still are very knowledgeable um, in other brands and being able to make those recommendations uh, f- for reels. I mean, all of us own hatches and Galvins and Ross reels and Abel reels and, mm-hmm. and Nautilus reels, just to name a few. You know, So we, we're really familiar with all the brands and uh, able to make those recommendations. But uh, Bauer's really kind of a, a, special, a special brand to us. And I mean, really the SST and the RX match up well with just about i mean perfectly with just about any winston rod so that's, it's, it's that, a good that's match. what's neat i think about winston is you're pretty equal opportunity because you probably see multiple different configurations of what people bring in or recommend and that's the neat thing is you know you're not just making specifically a rod and a reel you're making a rod that could fit basically any reel on the market you got i mean uh i do a lot of customer service work so you have to know what uh, what lines work on on rods so you have to be able to make it's really tough to make a line recommendation you know but uh um and that goes into the new winston energy lines which which makes that much easier you know but uh, we still have to know everything that every other manufacturer is building so we can we can just answer questions and, and be knowledgeable and that's that's the thing with the rod you know you have to know uh a line you really need to know what works on rods right if you're a line manufacturer i think if you're a rod manufacturer you have to know the whole story of what's Mm going to work on your rods so that's kind of a unique position to be put in and that's kind of a good segue into the winston energy lines and uh, in 2016 we started producing our own our own fly lines uh they're engineered exactly to our specifications on all of our rods specifically the way our rods deflect or bend Uh, so we produce fly lines with very specific tapers to help to properly load our rods and, and cast our rods. And they're wonderful all around lines. You can put them on and, and go trout fishing, or we do have saltwater tapers as well for our, our saltwater rods. Um, and you can be confident that this line is going to work really, really well from the get go with, with this rod. And then if you're going to get more specific, like you need a, a streamer, a streamer line or a dry fly line, that you know that's when you might need to branch out into another brand and uh and get a little bit more specific but uh as far as all around and an all-around taper the winston energy lines are really good and those are essentially a year to a year and a half and in design and we had to contract out specific engineers with very unique deflection deflection systems to to measure how every section of our rods deflected so they can really base those tapers off of that rod so that's really neat so out the door a guy could show up here in twin and get his rod his reel and his line and everything but probably teaching him how to cast you could walk out of here (laughs) with a full setup i saw some guys out here casting and people are getting pointers i think they (laughs) can do that huh last year we had a, a young lady in and she was looking from she was from helena and she was looking to get a get a winston so we casted four or five weights and nailed it down to two rods and i mean we had her good we we even run a loaner program you know so if you want to kind of get to know a rod and actually fish it we actually have a limited amount of loaners that you can actually test and fish and really dial in a rod to to what you're looking for so yeah and what's the beaver head about 
100 yards out uh, there, maybe. 200 <laughs> yards, you know. <laughs> Come in here, get a rod and 600 paces, they probably have it down yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we have a couple production guys that go out there in the afternoon and fish. <laughs> They probably know exactly how many paces it is yeah. Yeah. the first run, you know. <laughs> so. Speaking of work hours, you were saying pretty pretty neat work hours here in the facility based on the fact that uh, you like to get your folks out and fish in the afternoon? That's right. I mean, we're a fishing company, and it's not to say that everybody fishes, but the vast majority of our people fly fish and use our rods and know how to use our rods from, you know, the front room staff uh, to, like, the president, uh, David Andachi, is an amazing angler and caster and a rod designer. Annette McLean just, I mean, she can cast a fly rod better than anybody. But we, we can cast, but we also fish, and that's, I mean, that's our passion. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we're here. And that's said for all of our production workers. I mean, we have guys that go out on break that, that catch fish. We have spawning carp that come up into the slough, and guys will just be going nuts, throwing, throwing flies to those things, you know. So it's... It's a really unique culture here. In fact, when kind of a unique story is uh, Tom Morgan, when he moved the company here, um, production hours were at your own discretion. So if you wanted to come in at one in the morning and build and do your job, you could do that. And a lot of guys did that so they can be on the water at eight in the morning, you know, for mm-hmm. the, the PMD hatch or the spinner fall, or, you know, they can fish in the afternoons for hoppers and in the, in late summer, you know, so it's not like that anymore, unfortunately. Not as flex as it used but to be. But yeah. we have, we have, our production workers have one shift, and they work from 6 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, and a and, uh, vast majority of them go hit the rivers right after work. So what was it? What did we yeah. see? Eight people out there to build one rod? Something like that? Is that? Yeah, weird? right about. So, I mean, mm-hmm. in the rolling room itself, there's probably uh, seven different uh, quality control inspection points before a rod moves on to the next stage of production. So it's incredible. And that's something that, you know, listeners can't see is what we saw today. And that's, you know, you've got a a business that employs people to make a very high quality, you know, product. It's again, it's, it's not a manufacturing facility where it's going through a conveyor belt and it's getting done. It's something that visually that we saw that the the efforts that go into making one of those is pretty incredible. It is. Yeah. Made in the USA too. You know, that's, that's another big thing, you know, we're we proud would, about that. We would have some pictures, but they wouldn't let us take any pictures inside. <laughs> yeah. well, I can understand that. <laughs> There's some proprietary information. Mental, there. We mental understand pictures. That. Yeah. Yeah. Mental pictures, my So friends. now people just have to come and see it. That's yeah, the point. Come and yeah. see it. Come yeah. and see it. It really is. Tours a, daily, neat. Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock. Um, any of us are happy to take you through and show you how it's done. So It's well worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Adam, this has been really cool. It's been neat to just come here and taking the experience of, of the product and also the history of the product. I think that more than anything tells, you know, the, the story of RL Winston and where you guys came from and where you're at now. And I know for me, I, I really appreciate it and have a different perception of the product now than probably what I did before. Absolutely. And, you know, we're really, we're really proud to be building them here. And, you know, it's, it's just a unique, uh, a unique experience, you know, and, it's always it's always powerful to see how something's built and it, it really you know I've seen guys shed tears after the tour like man I have six of your rods and I love them but man <laughs> yeah, yeah. now I now I just I'm so connected yeah. to this thing and you know it's it's it's, it's pretty cool and yeah. it's a really cool job I'm really fortunate to work with such a great brand and company and yeah. um, some amazing people like most of our front staff has been here for longer than I've been alive so. Um, uh, from a rod designer, Annette McLean. I mean, she started with a company buffing real seats, you know. I mean, now yeah. she's VP of operations and designing wow. the finest fly rods in the world. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a really I've, – I've been here for seven years, and and that may seem like a long time, but when you have people saying, oh, I've been here for 40 years, and you're just like, well, <laughs> I have some learning got to long do. Ways it's a to career. Go. Yeah. It's not a job. I mean, it's a career at that point. That's yeah, right. It's given yeah. people that ability I know one that. of these rods have been on my list of things to buy for seven, eight years, and if I don't buy one today, I will be buying one very soon. <laughs> I promise you that. So that was uh, definitely yeah. – so Adam, the, the real question of the day is: So when are we going fishing? That's that's the most important oh, question. Man. <laughs> as soon as my allergies clear up, we yeah, right. 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 can actually see the fly about 40, 50 feet away uh, in the water. Yeah, let's go fishing right now. We can go out the back really quick. Yeah. It's 
Yeah, it's lunchtime. Yeah, yeah there's a few awesome. rods around here we could probably pull sure off we might the be wall able to and grab something and go fish a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I got I got about forty in my office right now, so we can. We're good. Grab one of yeah, those. You know, sounds good. Cool. Well, Adam, um, how can we'll someone get a hold of you me. or get a hold of? I guess Arl Winston obviously he's online and right. on social media. But if someone wants to want to get a hold of you, what would be the best way to do that? Uh, best way to do. I mean, obviously the fastest way is the call. But uh, I actually answer most of the company's incoming email and uh, shoot an email to info at winstonrods.com give us a call at 406-684-5674 and we can answer any of your questions about product uh the company or just fishing in general you know cool so you guys are all over social media you've got some outlets there you guys post photos you said you got a pro staff team so i'm sure you got guys on there posting pictures and fish and all kinds of stuff that's right yeah we have several pro staff teams a standard pro staff and we have we have very high level pro staff pro pro advisors uh kind of a field advisory staff, which deal a lot in conservation and that sort of thing, um, along with um, pro photos, pro, pro photographers, which is a really unique program where we kind of, uh, we have this unique group of guys that just take amazing pictures. And it's really important that our content matches the quality of our products. So uh, you'll notice that, you know, our Instagram feeds and our Facebook stuff is really high, high end stuff. It's just not, you know, hero yeah. pics or uh, that sort of thing. It's unique, uh, high quality stuff. And our pro photographer team just, just kills it for us. Those guys are awesome, but uh Pro staffers, too. Those guys do great things. You can see any number of our, I think we have about 125 plus pro staffers right now, and they work with our regional representatives. And you'll see the, those guys at, uh, at shows and stuff. And those guys are just as knowledgeable as us. That's why, that's why they're on the team. They understand the product. They're expert anglers and uh, just all around good guys. So that's neat. Excellent. That's cool. Ben? Yes. Uh, this was awesome. Yeah, I need to buy that guy a beer at the brewery one of these <laughs> nights. <laughs> my, yeah, my, really. Well, you do yeah. have a connection with him. So. <laughs> I thought my I thought my wife was gonna beat me yesterday when I didn't get back to Ben yeah. fast yeah. enough. You know, <laughs> well, we, were just, trying, we were chiming him. Okay, what's the plan for tomorrow? Yeah. How are we gonna get all this? I was this calling in here? to set up a tour while other important people were probably tr- calling to get their fly rod mm. fixed for the last hatch of the year. Yeah. Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea whipped me in the shade. Right there, <laughs> man. Tell me what. That'll one be good for that. It's one of the guys, use the wife channel. One of the guys that uh, work here, Jeff McGowan, he's actually nicknamed my wife the Hammer because <laughs> she puts down the hammer pretty quick when she wants to. You know? I have one of those myself. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's needed. Yeah, we need it. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, I cool. really appreciate it. this. Was a this was a great experience and. Uh, if you don't have an R.L. Winston rod, everyone needs to come down and get one for sure. Or just call the dealers and just go for a tour. Yeah, yeah it was my, my pleasure hosting you guys and chatting with you guys and your and your fans and followers today. It's just been it's been great. So yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Adam, it's been good having you on. Appreciate your insight and appreciate giving us a little bit of wedge of your time today. I know you're pretty busy guy and a lot of things going on, but uh, we do appreciate you hosting us and uh Again, just excited to be here and, and need to really understand the history and how this product is made and developed. So thank well, you. My pleasure, guys. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Adam. All Good right, time. guys. Take care. Hey, everyone. This is Lucas Paw, host of the RNA Outdoors podcast. Please check out Podbean and iTunes. If you have an iPhone or iPad, go to the podcast app on your device, search for RNA Outdoors, and hit the purple subscribe button. When doing this, it will automatically upload when new podcasts are loaded and they will download into your queue. For Android users, you can access the podcast through Podbean, Stitcher, or use our website, www.rnaoutdoors.com forward slash podcast. In addition, under the RNA Outdoors podcast channel, please leave a review and a five star rating. These reviews help boost our popularity and outreach. You can also follow us on our social media outlets Twitter at RNA Outdoors, Facebook, RNA Outdoors, and Instagram, Rod and Arrow Outdoors. All links are in the show notes as well. If you like what you've heard, we hope you'll pass along our channel to your friends and colleagues. Keep up the good fight. We cannot sit by and watch the public lands devoted to wildlife protection wither away. There's simply too much at stake. 
Make your voice heard, speak up, and get involved with conservation efforts. And know that every little bit helps. As we say on the mountain, go farther, stay longer.